Um, you have multiple ways to give here at Cedar Grove. One of those being go directly to our website at cedargrovechurch.org. You can give directly that way. Another way is to download our Church Center app. 
you download that app and then you search for Cedar Grove Church. And then thirdly, we are doing something special in this season right now where any amount that you text to give, you would text any amount to 84321, that money is going directly to people who need um, financial blessings in this season. We're gonna really concentrate on our elderly population. So any amount that you give, 100% of that will go to the elderly population here in the Middle Tennessee area. Again, you would text any amount to 84321. Greetings, thanks to God. This is Pastor Monty Lester, the senior pastor of the Cedar Grove Church, located right here in beautiful Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And once again, we welcome you, our online church family. We thank God for each and every one of you for coming in and being a part of our worship experience today. I'm grateful to God for each and every one of you because even in this season, we're able to reach more people during this season than we ever would with our brick and mortar building. Hallelujah. The church has left the building and we're grateful to God for each and every one of you and I want you to center yourself. Take a moment now. Get ready to worship. Yes, this is not for entertainment. This is for edification. We're here to have an encounter, to have an experience with God today. And we thank God uh, for our online family. We thank God for all that he's doing in this season. Speaking of thankfulness, I thank God for digital discipleship. Yes, digital discipleship. Yes, Lord, we're able to still minister. We're still able to serve this present age. Yes, Lord, we're still able to positively impact the earth through, through Jesus Christ. And we're grateful to God for all the things that he's doing, all the classes that are still going forth, even online. Yes, Lord, uh, for ministry is still, that's still going forth. And I thank God for that. Uh, thank God that I passed the sweetest church this side of heaven. Yes, I'm a little biased. Yes, the Cedar Grove Church located right here in beautiful Murfreesboro, Tennessee, the sweetest saints this side of heaven. I just thank God for all that he's doing through you. Speaking of thankfulness, thank God for just this week uh, for all of you that have participated in the Secret Santa uh, exchange, the Secret Santa exchange that we did for the Child Advocacy Center. Uh, thank God for every gift, everything that you've deposited, uh, that you've sacrificed, that you've sown into the kingdom. I just believe that you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. I believe for those of you that continue to give uh, your time your talent and treasure, giving even in secret. God who sees what's done in secret, he will reward you openly. So we're grateful to God for your generous heart, for your mind, for ministry, and for all the things you are continuing to do, even in this season. Speaking of thankfulness, we're also thankful. Uh, for the Cedar Grove Church for the Lady Tamara Day celebration. Yes, Lady Tamara Day celebration. Some of you know I met the girl of my dreams. Yes, Lord, on December 6th. Hallelujah. And thank God that the church has decided to set aside uh, that special day to celebrate our, our first lady, Lady Tamara Lester. And I just thank God for you, Cedar Grove, and the kindness uh, that you express towards her. We're still getting gifts. Yes, Lord, uh, flowers and, and so many other things that you have given uh, to to express your love and your appreciation for our first lady. Yes, she pours out so much. She does so much behind the scenes for ministry. And it's just nice to be nice. It did my heart good to see you love on her as well as you did. So again, we want to say thank you uh, on the behalf of our family uh, for First Lady Day and all that you have done there. Hallelujah. And speaking of thankfulness, again, I'm grateful to God for even the opportunity to fellowship. Uh, this past Friday night, we had our Cedar Grove Christmas game night. Lord have mercy, yes, our Cedar Grove Christmas game night. And some of you know that I love loving on God's people. I love the opportunity just to come together and have a good time in the name of the Lord, to have some good, clean, innocent fun. And one of the hardest parts about this COVID-19 season is we're called to be socially distant. But even in the socially distant uh, season, we can still be spiritually connected. And the opportunity just to come and to fellowship, uh, to share a laugh, and to see some faces I hadn't seen in a long time. I'm uh, we still did it in a socially distant way, uh, use, utilizing technology and Zoom and all that other stuff. And I'm just grateful to God for all of you and for everything that we're able to experience. So as you come into the cyber sanctuary, yes, Lord, we want you to wake up your family, wake up your friends, uh, and let people know that w the word is getting ready to go forth with power and authority. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to like, tag, and share. I want you to make sure that you're uh, doing your part in electronic evangelism. Somebody needs a word. Uh, 
Uh, somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody needs to be strengthened. Somebody needs to know that God is on the throne. So we thank God for you. And we want to challenge you to stay connected during this season. Um, uh, the best way to stay connected is using our Church Center app. Yes, uh, our Church Center app is the best place to uh, see everything that we're doing at the Cedar Grove Church. So we're grateful to God for each and every one of you. We thank God for all that he is doing in the earth. And I just want to let you know that he is on the throne and we're grateful to God. Amen. Well, I want to let you know there is a word from heaven that I would love to share with you. There is a word from heaven that I would love to share with you. Hallelujah. Uh, we're continuing in our series, the Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him series. Yes, the Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him series. Hallelujah. And as we continue with part two of that series, I want to call your attention to Matthew chapter two. Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12. Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12. And I will share from the New King James translation today, Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12. Hallelujah. Here begins the reading of God's word. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem uh, saying, where is he? who has been born king of the Jews, uh, for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Yes, we have come to worship him. Verse three, when Herod the king uh, heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he inquired, inquired of them uh, where the Christ was to be born, yes. And verse five says, so they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, yes, it is written by the prophet, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judea are not least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had heard secretly call the wise men, uh, determined from them what time the star appeared. And when he sent them to Bethlehem, he said, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back to me. Bring word back to me that I may come, check this out, and worship him also. Yes. Verse 9. And when they heard the king they departed, and behold, the star which had been seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child, young child was. Verse 10 says, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced greatly. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down, yes, and worshiped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, but they departed for their own country another way. Amen. I'm getting ready to preach, uh, getting ready to pray, excuse me. But the Lord and I would like to minister on this Sunday as we continue in this sermon series. I want to talk about the gift of his presence. Amen. The gift of his presence. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Uh, precious Lord, we praise you. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, and as always, Lord, we make the choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for every provision that you've provided and put in place for this moment in time to take place. And Lord, I pray now that your word would go forth with power and authority, that your people may be strengthened, your people may be encouraged, your people may be healed and delivered and set free uh, by the power of your word. So I'm going to say thank you now for what you're getting ready to do. Use me today as your servant is in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Somebody loves him. Shout amen. 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 The gift of his presence. Hallelujah. God has always been very intentional about being in the presence of his children. Amen. From our initial, from our initial creation, when he said, let us make man uh, in our own image in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, uh, uh, having a, an intimate, uh, loving relationship between the creator and his creation has been his priority. Hallelujah. Even when our sins uh, has separated us from him, he's always taken the initiative, catch that, the initiative uh, to reach out 
and to lovingly restore the relationship uh, between the creator and the creation. As a matter of fact, uh, when Adam sinned in the garden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, God says, Adam, where are you? Yes, he was intentional about restoring the relationship uh, between the creation and the creator. Uh, God wants to have an intimate relationship with his children. Yes, the gift of his presence. And that's why uh, we celebrate this season. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we celebrate this season where, where God loves us uh, so much that he gave the gift of salvation uh, through his son Jesus to prepare the way for us to always be in his presence. As a matter of fact, it's in John three sixteen in your Bible where the word of God says, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave uh, his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish yet, but shall have everlasting life. God wants us to be forever in his presence. As a matter of fact, Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah 7 and 14. He said, therefore, uh, uh, the Lord himself will give you a sign and behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and he shall be called, his name shall be called Emmanuel. Yes, Lord, Emmanuel. And some of you understand what Emmanuel means, yes means that God is with us. And I don't know about you, but that's enough to shout right there. Yes, uh, just knowing that God is with us. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's good news. God desires to uh, for us to be present with him. And he, uh, he wants to give us uh, this day, uh, this season, and throughout all eternity, the gift of his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when God gives such a gift... Uh, when God is so mindful of us, when he gives such an amazing gift, uh, how do you respond to that? What do you do when somebody gives you the most amazing gift that has ever been given to the earth? Hallelujah. I believe our response should be to, uh, to give intentional worship back to him. Amen. To give intentional worship back to him. Somebody type intentional. Yes. Intentional. What does that mean? That means we, we take the initiative uh, to seek and to adore our God. We take the initiative to, to receive this gift that God has given unto us. We take this initiative not to leave the gift under the tree, yes, but to open it and to receive it and to appreciate it. We take advantage of this gift. We, we receive the gift of his presence, yes, Lord, uh, to spend time to worship and adore him. And that's what this whole series is about, saying, come, let us uh, adore him. Amen. Amen. That's what we do with that. And that's what I want to talk about today as we uh, go through the text here in Matthew chapter 2. I want to talk about what we do uh, to intentionally worship our Lord and our Savior, to appreciate the gift of his presence. Can we take, can we go deeper today? Hallelujah. Because in Matthew chapter two, hallelujah, verses one through 12, and really throughout the entire chapter, uh, this is what, this, uh, in Matthew, he details the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, coming from heaven to earth, um, talks about his miraculous birth. Yes, Lord, the beginning of his earthly ministry, uh, where it culminates uh, his earthly ministry by, by, uh, with the purpose of dying for the sins of mankind. Yes, he comes from heaven to earth to hang, bleed, and die on a rugged cross to die for the sins of mankind. Hallelujah. And the response for men, uh, uh, the response, that's what it's talking about in this text. Yes, uh, that uh, these men are a response of wise men. Uh, the wise men, as they've been called, is to intentionally worship him, uh, to take the initiative, to, to press their way, to be in the presence of our Savior. Yes, Lord. I want to talk about intentional worship. Yes, Lord. Intentional love. Yes, Lord. Just like Thanksgiving, I believe that worship, uh, love should be intentionally expressed. I'm going to say that again. Just like Thanksgiving, uh, I believe that worship, uh, love, should be intentionally expressed. It's one thing to think it in your head or to hold those feelings in your heart, but, but when you love somebody, I believe that you need to go out of your way. I believe that something needs to be done. Yes, yeah, send a flower, send a note, say, uh, say something. Yes, Lord, do something to let somebody know that you uh, love them. Take the initiative. And even when it's not easy, when, when times are tough and when it's trying to do that, I believe that true love love makes a way, yes, that we can come and, and do just that, intentionally worship, intentionally express our love. And that's what the text is talking about today. It's talking about some wise men who came from the east, yes. Uh, these wise men eagerly journeying uh, to Bethlehem to give a royal welcome uh, to the great new ruler of the world. I'm talking about Jesus, yes. Uh, uh, they packed up gold. They, they packed up frankincense. They packed up myrrh. Hallelujah. Uh, so they th can join in the heavenly worship of the infant king. 
king. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, the gift of his presence. Can we go deeper today? And because, again, as we talk about the gift of his presence, I want to just highlight a few things in this text from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about as it relates to defining this response of intentional worship, intentional love. Yes, Lord, that intentional worship and love, number one, takes the initiative. Yes. Intentional worship and love, number one, takes the initiative. I'm in verses one and two. Uh, the Bible says, uh, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men, somebody shout wise men. Yes, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who was born king of the Jews? Uh, for we have seen his star from the east. Yes, and check this out. And we have come to worship him. Yes, uh, we have come to worship him. In other words, these wise men had a premeditated praise. Uh, uh, they came with intentionality to come to take the initiative to worship our Lord and our Savior. Yes, Lord, they took the initiative. In other words, they didn't wait for nobody else. They said, we have come from the east. We have come from distant lands that we may worship him. Yes, these wise men, uh, they, they formed an important part of the celebration that surrounds Jesus's birth. In fact, uh, they represent, they actually to represent you and I in, in God's great plan. And as we follow their example through intentional worship, uh, through seeking and serving, guess what? You and I become part of the heavenly symphony uh, uh, that begins passionate praise of the Savior. Yes, Lord, these wise men, they were intentional worshipers. Uh, they were men that didn't mind pressing their way. Uh, and I just believe that in order to birth the greatness of God, that there are times you got to grunt a little bit. Uh, you got to press on. You got to pray on. Uh, uh, you got to press on in, until you receive uh, what God has in store for you. And there are times and it's not easy to get into the presence of God, especially in times like this. But but I just believe that as you seek him, yes, Lord, you will find him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just believe that wise men as well as wise women still intentionally worship him. Uh, uh, I believe that they still seek him. Yes, Lord. And I still believe that we take the initiative, the, the actions to be in his presence because somebody knows that when we get in the presence of God, yes, something happens. Lord have mercy. Yes. When we get in the presence of God, uh, something happens. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. You can uh, look in your Bible in Mark chapter two, uh, where there were four men uh, that carried this guy who was paralyzed. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, but they heard that Jesus was in the house. They wanted to be in his presence. And, and they wanted to be in his presence so bad, yes, Lord, that although they couldn't get into the door, they couldn't get into the window. The Bible said they climbed up on the roof and they ripped the roof off. Yes, Lord, sometimes you got to be intentional about getting into the presence of God. Don't take my word for it. Mark chapter 5, we saw a man that was possessed with a legion of demons. Yes, Lord out of his mind, couldn't keep his clothes on. They couldn't do nothing with him. But guess what? When he saw Jesus get off the boat, when he saw that Jesus had came all the way from the other side of the lake, uh, this man, yes, Lord, he pressed his way to praise God. Yes, he worshiped him. And as a consequence, God delivered him from the legion of demons that had plagued him. Hallelujah. You don't have to take my word for it. Yes, Lord. You can look at Mark chapter 10 in your Bible. Yes, Lord. When blind Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by, guess what? Um, Yes, Lord, they, they tried to keep him quiet and, and they tried to keep him out of the way. But the more they told him to keep quiet, yeah, the louder he got. Yes, Lord, he was intentional. Yes, Lord, he was intentional about worshiping and pressing his way into the presence of God. Because when you press your way into the presence of God, you know that something happens. Yeah, you know that something begins to change. And I just believe that's why you and I worship. Yes, Lord, even if we can't come to the church house, guess what? We'll mess around and get online. Yes, Lord. We'll listen to the podcast. We'll, we'll go to YouTube. We'll wake up early and read our Bible because there's something about the presence. Yeah, the presence of God. Yes, Lord, uh, the presence of God. And, and because of that, we have to be intentional. Yes, be intentional about worship. Yes, Lord. Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah 55 and 6. He said, seek the Lord. Uh, while he may be found to call upon him while he is near. Yes, Lord. So as we talk about uh, the gift of his presence, yes. Number one, uh, uh, intentional love, intentional worship, intentional worship takes the initiative. Number two, uh, seeks and give, seeks to give and not just to get. Yes, intentional worship, intentional love seeks to give and not just to get. 
Amen. Uh, intentional worship is, is selfless. Uh, it's not selfish. Uh, uh, it it te- seeks to give and not just to get. The Bible says, I'm in verse number 11, it says, and when they had come into the house, uh, they saw the young child with his mother and they fell down, yes, and they worshiped him. Uh, they said, you know what, we've come a long way. Yeah, we've, we've come from the east and when they finally got there, when they finally able to get into the presence of the newborn king the bible says in verse number 11 that they fell down yes and they worshiped him and here it is and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts yes uh, gifts of gold frankincenses and myrrh yes lord gifts of gold frankincenses and myrrh yes Uh, uh uh they wanted to give something unto the king In other words, uh, they understood the importance of a reciprocal relationship. Yes, intentional worship understands the importance of a reciprocal relationship. And I guess some of you may say, well, what does that mean? Uh, uh, A reciprocal relationship is a situation where you give and take. Uh, It's not just a one-way relationship. It's it's a situation where you give and take, where where, uh, everybody involved continues to make uh, deposits intentionally. Uh, They're not just making withdrawals. They're making deposits intentionally. Yes, Lord, it's a reciprocal relationship. Yes, Lord, uh, uh, a situation where where you love people and they love you back. Yeah, it's it's reciprocal. Yes, Uh, it's not like some people do in some relationships. It's just transactional. Uh, just transactional. And I believe that's, uh, that's the way some people even treat God with a transactional relationship. Uh, it, it's kind of like a spiritual pre- uh, 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 quid pro quo. Yes. Uh, and that's uh, that, that uh, legal term where it means you give a little to get a little. In other words, you, you come to God uh, just for the transaction. Uh, uh, as some people, and you, some people are familiar with being in transactional relationships versus reciprocal relationships. Uh, re- transactional relationships where if there's no finance, there's no romance. Uh, you've been in a transactional relationship. But, but isn't it a beautiful thing to be in a reciprocal relationship where you, uh, uh, you give and continue to outgive one another? You continue to forgive one another? Hallelujah. There's nothing more refreshing, nothing more renewing than being in a reciprocal relationship. But that's what God wants with us. Amen. Uh, he wants to have that type of relationship. Yes, Lord, uh, where it's reciprocal, where the more you give to him, guess what? The more he gives unto you. These wise men, they came from the east. Yes, Lord. They wanted to see the king. They wanted to be in the presence of God. But they didn't just come asking, Lord, what can you do for me? Uh, uh, they came and they presented gifts themselves. Yes, Lord. Gifts of frankincense, uh, gifts of myrrh, uh, gifts of gold. They, they wanted to give unto God. Hallelujah. And I just believe that's what God wants from each and every one of us. He wants a reciprocal relationship. Amen. Uh, he's not. He doesn't want those relationships where uh, that are transactional, where, where people just come and call upon him just when they want something. Amen. Some people treat him like an ATM. If you got the right card and you got the right code, you can get what they want. But does anybody just wants to be close to him? Uh, in your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures. Mm, forevermore. Yes, Lord. Lord, I want to be in a reciprocal relationship. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and actually, that's the point of true worship anyway. Uh, that's the point of true worship anyway. The point of true worship is to get more of him and not just more of his stuff. Amen. Uh, to get more of him and to get, than to get more of his stuff. Hallelujah. Because when you have him, regardless of what's going on, yes, Lord, uh, uh, you know that God is on your side, the gift of his presence. Yes, Lord. Uh, when you have him in your corner, yes, Lord, that's when church folks can't run you off. Hallelujah. When you have him in your corner, you just, just to be close to you. Yes, that's your desire. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And the Bible says in verse 11, and when they had come into the house, Yes, the, uh, they saw the young child and his mother Mary, and they fell down and they worshiped him. And they opened their treasures and they presented gifts to him. Yes, gifts of frankincense, gifts of gold, uh, gifts of myrrh. Hallelujah. And when you think about it, I, I feel like the psalmist today. Yes, Lord. The psalmist said in Psalms 116, verses 12 through 17, What shall I render? 
unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me. Have you thought about what God has done for you? Hallelujah. And when you think about that, you can't help but say, Lord, whatever I have, Lord, it all belongs to you. Yes, Lord. And I'm willing to give it to you in a reciprocal relationship. Amen. So, so as we travel further through the text, hallelujah, uh, as we appreciate the gift of his presence. Uh, uh, these wise men, uh, they taught us some things today. They taught us uh, how to respond to the gift of his presence, the gift of the greatest gift that, have come to, that has ever come to the world. Yes, Lord, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, number one, they talk about that intentional worship, intentional love. T number one, takes the initiative. Uh, they taught us that intentional love and intentional worship, number two, seeks to give and not just to get. And then number three, yes, uh, intentional worship, intentional love grows stronger. Lord have mercy when it's tested. Oh my God, grow stronger when it's tested. Uh, I'm in verses three through nine verse, and verses 12 through 23. Uh, grow stronger when it's tested. Because believe it or not, uh, I've said this often, and not because I don't have anything else to say, but because I believe it with all of my heart. I often say that when God is grooming somebody for greatness, mm, that hell gets in a hurry. Let me say that again. When God is grooming for somebody for greatness, yes, hell gets in a hurry. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and there are times when your worship, whenever giving God your best, uh, your worship becomes complicated. Yes. But I want to let you know today that it grows stronger when it's tested. Hallelujah. Amen. And when, uh, and in this situation right here, uh, what's going on at the text is that when Jesus was born, uh, this great king, this great gift that came to the earth. Hallelujah. Uh, there was a king in place named Herod. And some of you know Herod, amen. Uh, he's known, and even in the history books, as Herod the Great, because he was a great Roman conqueror that did a lot of things for, for Rome, hallelujah. And although the Romans may consider him great, hallelujah, the Christians can think of him as not so great, hallelujah, because he was one that the devil used uh, to try to hinder, to try to hold back. Uh, to try to delay and deny what God had said was going to happen in the earth. And again, uh, when God is grooming us for greatness or when God desires to do something great in the earth, hell gets in a hurry. And what I've learned is that uh, uh, the devil always needs a vessel. Uh, he's a, a fallen angel. He's a spirit. And, and what he needs is a vessel. He always hires somebody that can carry out his evil plan, his evil work. Uh, you've heard it this way, uh, John 10 and 10. The thief cometh what? But to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And in this text right here, yes, Lord, what was going on is that hell hired Herod to carry out the the destruction and the killing and to try to deny what God was trying to do through his son Jesus in the earth. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, he, hell hired Herod. And believe it or not, Herod was thoroughly qualified. Yes, he was th thoroughly qualified to carry out the evil work that uh, the enemy wanted to do in the earth. And again, when, when uh, God is grooming us for greatness, when God wants to do something great, hallelujah. Have you noticed uh, how the devil always comes on the scene and how he always hires somebody uh, to try to prevent uh, what God is desiring to do in the earth. Don't take my word for it. Ask Moses uh, because Moses had to deal with Pharaoh. Don't take my word for it. Ask Cain because he had to deal with Abel. Uh, don't take my word for it. Ask Samson because there was Delilah that he had hired. Uh, don't take my word for it. Ask Adam because Adam had to deal with the devil himself when God had uh, created uh, man in his own image image in the earth. And today, uh, Lord have mercy, Jesus, uh, the Savior of the world, uh, he had a confrontation that, uh, that someone that the devil had hired also, yes, Lord, even at his birth, the devil had hired Herod to carry out his evil plan. Hallelujah. And what, I know, what I've noticed is that the devil, uh, guess what? He, uh, uh, whenever he's looking to hire somebody, he looks just like anybody else. He looks for the character qu qualities. Amen. And when I was uh, preparing and pursuing the Lord as it relates to what he would have me to share to the 
saints on this Sunday. Yes, Lord. Uh, he took me to John Maxwell's leadership Bible, and, and there it talks about uh, the resume of Herod, uh, this evil king, yes, Lord, that tried to hold back, uh, tried to hinder what God was doing in the earth. As a matter of fact, I want, I want to run through this real quickly, hey, man, because uh, uh, some of you know Herod. Some of you may have dealt with your own Herods in your life, uh, but I want to talk about, I believe John Maxwell was on to something uh, when he talked about the resume of Herod. Uh, this is how you know you're dealing with a Herod spirit. Uh, here it is. Number one, uh, he felt disturbed and threatened when he learned of a coming king. I'm in verse three. Yes, Lord. He felt threatened and disturbed when he heard that Jesus was coming. Yes, Lord. Number two, uh, he leveraged his power against any possible competitor. Yes, Lord. That's what Herod always do, does. Yes. He leveraged his power against any possible competitor. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He, he used his power. He, he called for uh, the, uh, 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 the scribes and, and the priests uh, and to find out where Jesus was. Yes, Lord. Uh, number three. He used uh, people to serve his own purposes. I'm in verses seven and eight. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, he used people to serve his own purposes. Uh, uh, he used his position and power and people to serve his own purposes. He wasn't concerned about what he could do for anybody else. Uh, Herod, this king, was concerned about what everybody else can do for him. Y'all know Herod, don't you? Uh, number four, uh, Herod, he lied in order to project the right image. Oh, my God, he, he lied in order to project the right image. Uh, in verse number eight, the Bible talks about what Herod did, that, that after he had inquired about this new coming king, after he was threatened that this king was going to come and overtake him, the Bible says that, you know what, I know y'all are going to worship this king. And, and so, wise men, when you, I want you to go out, and when you find him, guess what? I want you to come and tell me where he is, because guess what? I, I want to go and worship him, too. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And some of y'all know about Herod. Y'all know that Herod has never been a spiritual man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know that Herod has never been concerned about worshiping Christ. Yes, uh, that's not been his priority ever. Yes, Lord. But he was lying in order to project the right image. You know Herod. Yes, Lord. Number five, he reacted with fury when he didn't get his way. I'm in verse number 16. Because after the wise had tricked him and, and told him, uh, did not tell him how this thing uh, where, where, the, uh, where Christ was. Yes, Lord. Uh, the Bible says that he got upset. He, he reacted with fury and anger when he didn't get his way. Number six. Yes, Lord. He was concerned. Uh, he concerned himself only with his own benefit. Lord, have mercy. He was concerned about his own benefit. Yes, Lord. The Bible says when Herod saw that they had uh, mocked him, uh, that the wise man had mocked him. He was exceedingly wroth, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, yes, Lord, and all the coasts thereof from the age of two years old and under, according to the time which they had diligently inquired uh, of the wise men. Yes, Lord, uh, uh, he, concerned, uh, he was concerned about his own benefit, yes, Lord. And then number seven, yes, Lord, he sought to destroy any potential threat to his leadership. Yes, Lord, he wanted to keep his position. He he wanted to keep his power. Yes. He sought to destroy anyone that threatened uh, his potential leadership. Verses 16 and 17. And when you're dealing with a Herod, I want to make sure this is clear today. Hallelujah. Uh, that Herod has to be dealt with. Amen. Uh, because whenever you have a Herod in authority, yes, uh, there are always enormous casualties. Uh, there's always enormous casualties. Herod, he chose to kill every young child. Uh, of the age of two and less. Yes, Lord, every male child under the age of two. There's always mass casualties uh, whenever there is a Herod in charge. And today, as I was praying, prayerfully pursuing the Lord, I was asking him, have we hired some Herods? Mm. Uh, have we hired some Herods? Uh, because when I look at some of the folks that are in authority today, yes, Lord, when I see food lines, yes, Lord, and, and people uh, suffering and, and going through evictions, when, when I see struggling businesses, yes, and people losing jobs, and, and when I see mass deaths that are happening even in this country, yes, Lord, I'm wondering today, have we hired a Herod? Yes, Lord, because again, whenever Herod is in charge, there's always enormous casualties. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And what I've noticed is that whenever God is getting ready to do something, the devil always has a way of trying to attempt to kill what God is giving birth to. But does anybody know the devil is still a liar? Yes, Lord. Uh, the devil is still a liar. As a matter of fact, some of you can relate to what's going on in the earth. Amen. Because you have been under attack yourself. Hallelujah. And that's how you know that you are anointed. That's how God, you know that God has a plan for your life, a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope as well as a future. So as a matter of fact, you ought to go on and shout, I must be anointed. Amen. Because all the hell I've been going through, uh, Herod has been on my trail for so long. Guess Lord, Even from birth, uh, Herod has been trying to attack me. But guess what? Uh, Isaiah put it this way. No weapon form. Yeah. I guess you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, God said that he shall condemn. Yes, Lord. Amen. Herod, he may try to hold you back, but does anybody know that if God is on your side, yes, Lord, that there's nothing that Herod can do. Hallelujah. Paul put it this way in Romans 8. Yes, Lord. What shall we say to these things? Hmm. Because if God be for us, uh, who can be against us? And that's a good question today. Because if you know that if God is for you, yes, Lord, who can be against us? Paul went on in Romans 8 to say that who he who did not spare his own son, yeah, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes, and who shall bring anything against God's elect? Guess what? Uh, uh, God is in control, and although Herod may be powerful, although Herod may be in position, although he may have a resume and a history of always destroying and always trying to attack God's people. Guess what? God, if God is on our side, yes, Lord, if God has anointed us and called us to do great things, just like Jesus, yes, Lord, uh, God is going to finish just what he started. Yes, Lord. So who shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ? Uh, shall tribulation, shall distresses, shall persecution, shall famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things. Guess what? We are more than conquerors. Yes. Uh, through him who loved us. Paul put it this way. For I am persuaded. Yeah. That neither death nor life. Uh, nor angels or principalities, uh, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's good news today. I'm glad today that, that although uh, your heroes in your life may be powerful, although they may be on your trail, I'm glad today, yes, Lord, that God has a way of working all things together. Yeah, all things together for the good of those who love him, uh, for the call according to his purpose. And if Marvin Sapp was here today, he'd be able to testify, yes, guess what? Yes, Lord, because of my intentional worship, because of my intentional love, guess what? I'm stronger. Yes, I'm grown stronger when it was tested. I'm stronger. I'm better. Yes, I, I'm wiser because of what God has gone through. And I don't think Marvin Sapp is the only one. Yes, Lord. I believe somebody else knows that God has been good. And because of that, yes, Lord, your love for him has grown stronger when it's tested. And as I get ready to close today, hallelujah, yes, Lord, as, as we understand, yes, Lord, the gift of his presence. When we talk about, yes, Lord, uh, how to receive and respond to the greatest gift that God has sent to the world. Yes. Uh, and the way we respond to it is in intentional worship to to intentionally express our love, our gratitude and gratefulness for God and all that he has done. So uh, as we respond, yes, Lord, and as I close, I want to say this today. Intentional worship. Number one, takes the initiative. Intentional worship. Number two, seeks to give and not just to get. Yes, Lord. Uh, intentional worship. Number three, grows stronger when it's tested. And then last and finally, my brothers and my sisters, intentional work, worship. When we ex express our love for God intentionally, yes, Lord, that's when sacred secrets are shared. Yes, that's when sacred secrets are shared. And I just want to minister this last point. As a matter of fact, I, I don't even want to raise my voice. Huh? I want to let you know that sacred secrets are shared when we learn how to worship and receive this awesome gift that God has given us, huh? the gift of his presence. The Bible says in verse number 12, uh, and being warned of God in a dream, somebody shout a dream, uh, that they should not return to Herod, uh, they departed into their own country another way. Do you understand that when you get in the presence of God, yeah, the sacred secrets are shared. Hallelujah. That's when God comes in and ministers to you. And let you know, guess what? I, I, had a, I have a plan for your life. 
uh, that's when uh, these sacred seekers are shared. And he lets us know that his will, uh, that's when his will is revealed and accomplished in the earth. Sacred seekers, yes, Lord. He was letting them know, guess what, wise men? I, I understand uh, that Herod has said that he wanted to come and uh, kill Jesus. I, and I understand that he wanted to use you in his plot uh, to get to our newborn king. But guess what? Because you have been in worship, hallelujah, because you have been in my presence, sacred secrets are shared. He, he let them know, guess what? Uh, even in a dream. Does anybody know God will talk to you in, in a variety of ways? Yes. Even in a dream, uh, he came and he told him, guess what? Don't go back to Herod. Don't tell him where the Savior is. As a matter of fact, I want you, and as a matter of fact, he told Joseph and Mary as well, I want you to depart and to go into a different direction. And as a, as a response or as a result of that sacred secret being shared, that's when Jesus left uh, Joseph took Jesus and Mary and they went to the town of Bethlehem, uh, uh, Nazareth, excuse me, they went to Nazareth. And that's where Jesus was raised. And that's where the fulfillment of another prophecy was that, that he would be called a Nazarene. Yes, Lord. Uh, 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. He was divinely warned in a dream. Yes, Lord. Uh, when, we, uh, when we are worshiping Christ, uh, when we learn how to receive and give intentional worship, yes, Lord, sacred secrets are shared. Uh, in the midst of that, he provides protection. Hallelujah. He told him to go a different way. Not only that, sacred secrets. He, he provides promotion. Yes, Lord. But most importantly, he provides his plan. For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. Guess what? God can handle any hair rod that comes in your direction. Hallelujah. God can handle any hair rod that comes in your direction. But what he wants to do is let you know that while you're worshiping him and as you receive the gift of his presence, while you're enjoying time just worshiping him and receiving that awesome gift, guess what? You, you, as you worship and as you pour out to him, he begins to pour back into you. He begins to let you know that everything is going to be all right. And that's a word for somebody today. God wants to let you know that as you're even worshiping today, he wants to share this sacred secret uh, that the light at the end of the tunnel is officially on. Lord have mercy. I'm going to say that again, that the light at the end of the tunnel is officially on. God says, you know what? I know you've been dealing with Herod for a while, but guess what? I can handle your Herod. Yes, Lord. And the Bible says that Herod ultimately died and his son took power, but, and his son was just like his daddy. He was still a, an enemy of the kingdom of God. But does anybody know that there's nothing that God has made that he can't handle? Hallelujah. There's nothing that God has made that he can't handle. And he can handle your hair rod as well. But the, the response to, but God has given us uh, an awesome gift. And that's why we're here. That's what we're celebrating during this season, the gift of his presence. And the response to that gift, hallelujah, is to intentionally worship him, to intentionally give back to him, to take the initiative to press our way into his presence, to take the initiative to, to, to give and not just to get. These wise men, they presented gifts back unto God after he had given that uh, gift, hallelujah, uh, to intentionally, under, intentional worship understands that we grow stronger even when it's tested. And last and not least, yes, Lord, intentional worship is where God shares sacred secrets, amen. Uh, sacred secrets are shared. I thank God today, hallelujah. Uh, for this opportunity to be in his presence. I thank God today for these wise men that gave us an example of how to handle the greatest gift that has ever been given unto the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just believe that wise men still seek and adore him. And what about you? How are you handling the gift of his presence? Because what God wants us to do is to receive it and not to reject it. Amen. Every year, there are gifts that are left under the tree. But I believe in 2020 that God is saying something special to the saints today. I believe in this year that God is raising his voice like never before. That God is saying he wants everybody to know him and to receive this gift. Uh, hallelujah. Don't leave this gift under the tree. So if you're here and you're hearing this message today, I just want to let you know that God wants you to receive it. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to reject it. I believe the wise men still seek still adore and give back to God what he has so rightfully given unto you. Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God did say, amen. 
Hallelujah. May God bless you. May he ever keep you is our prayer. Amen. I just want to talk to the presence I just want to taste of your goodness I just want to be with you I just want to be with you Lead me to the place where your heart is Oh God Lord, come finish what you started. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Let heaven fall to earth. Let the church lift their voice with the humble cry.
just want to taste of your goodness. I just want to be with you. Yeah. I just want to be with you. Lead me to the place. Lead me to the place where your heart is. Lord, come and finish what you started. Lord, come finish what you started. I just want to be here. I just want to be with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to be with you. It's our hearts cry. I just want to be with you. Your people, oh God. I just want to be with you. We value time in your presence. I just want to be with you. We want to be, yeah. I just want to be with you. We want to be. I just want to be with you. Yeah. I just want to be Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be. With you. 